it's, it's a fallacy to think that being a mum and having your own life and having your own dream are like conflicting things. Because would you tell that to a grown career woman who's also struggling with that? Well, wow, they tell you, you slap you. Uh, what, what, in the age of female empowerment, of course I can be everything. I can be mother, I can be career woman also, right? Why cannot? Have you ever thought about abortion? For me personally, no. But there were so many people around me who pushed that as the very first idea that I should adopt. I think that, that was the immediate response. People would say, Oh, but you're so young. You haven't finished uni. You know, are you sure you want to get married? It was, it was very difficult to stand up for what I believed in. The first thought that came to me was, how do you fix this problem? You know, and so, I mean, I didn't know anything about abortion, but I mean, you know that it exists, right? So I was, the next question I asked Sarah was, okay, so when are we going to see a doctor implying like, just, you know, like get the problem out of the door, let's not talk about it. Um, and then was when she said, no, we're not going to do that. And I was like, are you crazy? Like, you know, I'm still an MS, man. I don't have, I don't have any money. We have, we're not ready to start a family. Um, but I think that as we talked about it, you know, more, it was right. It was difficult but it was right. I, I did think of like, you know, what options did I have to escape? But I think it wasn't so much of like running away from the problem, it was running away from myself. So at the time it was the worst time possible to find out because first of all, we had broken up and we had broken up because we were in a constant conflict about our relationship. We didn't like the fact that um, there was there was instances of premarital sex. And so that's why when we broke up, and then you find you're pregnant, you're like, oh my gosh, I thought I was trying to do the right thing. What is happening? And of course you have to tell your parents because if I had decided that I want to keep the baby, there's no way I can do it by myself. So our parents didn't know about it. So I sent an SMS to my parents, very, very summarized version. This is what's happened. And then I turned off the phone. I didn't, I didn't want to wait for, because I figured they would panic. They would call me and I didn't want to have to speak to them. Um, so I just turned it off and I decided to take from Pasiris to City Hall to Jurong to Woodlands, the longest way possible home. Because we're just kind of delaying the inevitable and somewhere in the line, I don't really exactly remember where, I, I pulled out my phone, I just couldn't take it anymore. I opened the message and there was one message from my dad and he just goes, we are in shock. I'm like, duh, right? But we love you, please come home. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, I'm gonna go back and face the music, basically. I, I think if I look back at my teenage life, that's definitely one of my lowest points. Just like, just crying and crying and crying and like, you know, trying to defend your position because I was not... We had to convince actually our parents that, that abortion was not the right way. I still remember having both sets of mothers at this joint meeting, like saying, why don't you just abort? And I was so pissed off. I was like, guys! <laughs> Do we believe in the same God? You know, I mean, I was that kind of like super still very feisty, la, you know? Let, let's just say it, it took time to get to that stage where we could have a consensus. We hate revisiting, even just thinking about it, it's like, oh, so... Very stressed. So stressful that yeah. period of time. You know, in the beginning, it's like, your fault, la, your fault, your fault. I think just everybody pointing fingers everywhere. I think when you're young, you just kind of like, I'll take it, la. I can do it, you know, like whatever, like, I'm just... Like just stop. All of us were actually being counseled at the time. And then on my parents side, I don't know about your parents, my parents had to go and talk to their pastors and their friends. And it's not just us giving birth to the child. They have to find their own reason and their own belief, you know, that this was the right thing to do. If it was just based on like logic, there's no reason why. It's not logical to keep a baby and I haven't even done my uni. I haven't done, done my A-level, oh my god. The pivotal moments I remember was at one of those showdown meetings with all our parents and and suddenly Mark's dad said, you know, I have something to share. He said that I believe that out of a messy situation, there can still be a beautiful ending. And I think that's when everybody believed and said that, yeah, you know, and like it's, it started out very messy, but that this child that's going to be born is going to be a uniting factor, you know, for all of us. Would you have gotten married if not for the baby? Why would I want to marry Sarah? It, it wasn't just to solve a problem. I mean, she wasn't like just some girl I had met like two weeks ago and we had three years worth of memories. I mean, I had someone ask me and say like, okay, keep the baby is one thing, but like, do you want to marry this person? Because, you know, to keep the baby is one ethical decision. To marry the father is like a lifetime 
implication as well. I remember I spent one afternoon kind of like just talking to myself and asking, do I have peace to, to marry this person? And I felt like, yeah, I have peace. <laughs> I, I, I feel very grateful that Mark didn't actually run away from the problem. He, he took responsibility and, and that had a lot of implications on his life, you know, because he then had to move in with my family. It was not easy for him, you know, to have to just suddenly live in a stranger's house. Imagine living with someone who was like just months before, like scolding you like crazy on the phone or making your daughter pregnant. There were conflicts, very, very big conflicts. At some point, I started going for counselling because I, you need someone else to talk to and she, it can't be her because then she feels like she's in the middle. Oh, I'm just like... I can't talk to my parents also because that creates unnecessary animosity. Counselling helped me to see it from their perspective. I've never actually apologised for what happened. You know, you know, one morning I said like to my father-in-law, like, okay, uh, let's, let's go to McDonald's, right? And I was very awkward, but, you know, managed to just say everything that I needed to say, right? So we were able to kind of find a, a space where it was like, okay, you know, like we're good with each other and have made peace in a sense. And then from that point on, I think it really, really made a difference. What was the thing that you had to do to keep this marriage working? In any relationship, there is an uh, element of sacrifice. Yeah. For us to raise our daughter together meant that we were, you know, committed to making that happen one way or the other, right? You, you'd find creative solutions to, to do things. I mean, I, when I started working and she was still in school, um, it was my daily practice to send our daughter to school and then use my lunch hour to pick her up go back home, eat a really, really quick lunch and rush back to work. So it means that I wouldn't meet anybody for lunch, you know, uh, other than my daughter. Yeah, so for me personally, that meant that I didn't really have much social life in uni. Uh, I was scuttling between school and home because it happened we stayed quite near my school to like breastfeed her in between classes. There are also other circumstances that come to play, right? So for instance, in our circumstance, we had supportive parents who were willing to you know, stump up space, resource, time, uh, and emotional support, right? And we didn't deserve that. That is grace because they could have wanted to kick us out of this honors, right? I mean, we, yeah, you, no. we've heard, we've heard, we've heard tougher of, stories, yeah, right? So, getting married is one part. Getting married, raising a child is like an additional, like yeah, thing. And so, um, without that support, could we have done it? Yes, I think. But would it have been difficult? Uh, yeah. We might have killed each other along the way. <laughs> Do you think you were too young then to be good parents? I mean, I think a lot of people would say like, oh, were you too young? I don't think so lah. I mean, for me personally, it was about like what Mark said, making yourself available, you know, to be there. And one of the things that I started doing with Ines, even when she was very young at like kindergarten age, was to say like, okay, let's have like mummy Ines time and we just lie on the bed and talk about anything you want to talk about. I think that having that bond and having the availability is not age dependent, you know, because it was about me making the decision to say that I'm going to spend this bit of time with you, I'm always going to be available. And so even now when she's like a teenager, you know, she, she, if she really needs to talk to me, she'll just say like, can we have mummy Ines time? And I'll just lie on the bed and she'll talk to me about her friend problems. And she'll be very, very open to hear what I have to say, but it's not because it's not because of anything other than the fact that I invested all that time when she was younger to be open to her and she being open to me, you know. And that's something that you can't like do overnight. You can't expect that your teenager will listen to you now. Like, listen to me because I know better. Like, of course you know better, but to earn that respect and to earn that trust, like, that has to be built with a relationship that, that, that has that depth and that time that was from young. So I feel that because we did that, you know, we're very close to her. And even now, like, she always wants hugs and kisses from us, um, especially daddy. Like, everyone has to have a hug from daddy, including me. Do you think you are emotionally mature enough to be good parents? I would like to say that nothing really prepares you for parenthood, right? Because you can read all the books, you can read websites, you can watch videos, but your child is not the one in the book or the video. So there, there are limits to how much you can prepare. Being a parent also means that you're perpetually learning. And granted, you're gonna make mistakes. Um, so it's how you pick yourself up from that and you know, keep going on. Do you wish that your life had turned out differently? So I had to give up the dream, obviously, of studying overseas. 
I had wanted to go to Oxford to study PPP. But you know, if I had gone to Oxford to do that, I, I may not even be in the place I am as well, which is, you know, doing music and media, psychology, philosophy and physiology is very far away from that. <laughs> so, in a sense, I think what happens to us is that we are able to receive new dreams. You know, a lot of people would want me to abort because they think that it's the end of my life if I have a baby. But I, I feel that it's, it's a fallacy to think that being a mum and having your own life and having your own dream are like conflicting things. Because would you tell that to a grown career woman who's also struggling with that? Well, wow, they tell you, you slap you. Uh, what, what, in the age of female empowerment, of course I can be everything. I can be mother, I can be career woman also, right? Why cannot? So why do you tell a teenage girl that? Do I wish that it would be different? The answer is no for me. I mean, if I wasn't doing what I am now, I mean, like, I wouldn't be a father of two. Um, you know, kids, I don't know what my kids would look like. They wouldn't look like what they look like now. Lah. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you, you just look at what you have around you and I think it's easier to sort of accept and just be thankful for what you do have rather than kind of like secretly long for what you don't have. I think it, it, it started messy, but along the way we've, we've seen so many beautiful moments and you can't really take that away anymore, you know what I mean?